personally. Uh, the second topic will be the role of ultrasound uh, in survival uh, left uh, by uh, Dr. Ahmed Rifai. Uh, Dr. Ahmed uh, Rifai is a consultant physiologist in Prince of uh, Medical uh, City in Riyadh. He has his uh, MBB uh, uh, in Alexandria University, a uh, master's degree of uh, radio diagnosis uh, of uh, radio, uh, sorry, master's degree of radio diagnosis uh, in Ancient University in Egypt, fellowship in uh, radio diagnosis from Royal College uh, of Physiologists in London, uh, UK. So we can do that now. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Anadia, for your kind invitation. Thanks a lot for all of you for your attendance. Uh, my talk will be about the uh, ultrasound of neck lymph node. Uh, this is the ultrasound classification for the uh, cervical lymph nodes. Uh, actually, it's different from the surgical classification and the oncological classification, which include the pilaryngeal and the paratracheal and the standard lymph nodes, which of course, it's not suitable to be examined by ultrasound. That's why this is specific uh, classification for cervical lymph nodes by ultrasound. It includes eight groups, group one up to group eight. Group one, which is the submental group. Uh, group two, submental group. Group three, parotid group. Group three, four, five, this is along with the uh, internal jugular vein. Group uh, seven, sopra, clavicular. And group eight is the posterior cervical lymph node. Can ultrasound differentiate between different lymph nodes in the neck? Yes, it can. Actually, lymph node in the neck is one of four either normal lymph node, or reactive lymph node, or tuberculous lymph node, or malignant lymph node, either lymphoma or metastatic lymph node. Starting with normal lymph nodes, what is the normal? What is the appearance of normal lymph node in the neck? On grayscale ultrasound, the normal lymph node is hypo ochroic, open shaped, preserved hyaline, a small size. Small size means its short axis is less than 9 millimeters. So, this is the features of grayscale ultrasound for the normal lymph nodes. Open, preserved hyaline, hypo ochroic, short axis less than 9 millimeters. This is regarding the gray scale. In color double study of the normal lymph node, usually either we have no flow at all or small flow or detectable flow in the hyaline itself. Nothing in the node itself and nothing in the periphery of the lymph node. So this is a normal color double study for the normal lymph node. A vascular or vascularity through the hyaline one. Regarding the spectral Doppler ultrasound for normal lymph node. Spectral Doppler ultrasound, usually the resistive index is low and also the pulsatility index. But the most important is the resistive index is low. No increased resistance inside the normal lymph node. Coming to the reactive lymph node. The active lymph node is, it is associated, as you see, with any infection in the region of the head and neck. Enlarge it because it is trying to fight off this infection. The grayscale image of the reactive lymph node is hypopoic like normal lymph node, preserved hyaline like normal lymph node, open shape like lymph node. The only difference from normal lymph node is increase in size, enlarge it. Enlarge it means that its short axis more than 9 millimeters. So, this is the difference between the reactive lymph node and the normal lymph node regarding the color double study. We mentioned in the normal lymph node either a vascular or vascularity through the hyaline. In the reactive lymph node, all the time we have flow inside the hyaline, as you see here. So we have flow inside the hyaline of the lymph node. Regarding the spectral Doppler ultrasound of the reactive lymph node, also it is of low resistance. 
no increased resistance inside the reactive lymph nodes, or we will have decrease of resistive index and of the pulse effective index, as you see here. Coming to the third one, which is tuberculous lymph node. A grayscale ultrasound that tuberculous lymph node is either it is hypoechoic without epigenic hilum. So here we have loss of the normal hilum, normal epigenic hilum, it's not there. So hypoechoic without epigenic hilum, over shaped like normal or sometimes rounded. The most important feature for the tuberculous lymph node is the associated features like intranodal cystic necrosis. Intranodal cystic necrosis, these are hypoechoic areas scattered through the substance of the lymph node itself. This is one of the features, not pathognomonic features, but it is one of the features because this feature also we can find it in the malignant lymph node. So intracystic, intranodal cystic degeneration of necrosis is one of the features of tuberculous lymph node. One of the most common features, and I can see that it is pathognomonic for the tuberculous lymph node, it mated together, nodal mating. Some lymph nodes adjacent to each other, coalescing together to give this uh, bizarre shape or abnormal irregular outline. This one is known as, known as nodal mating for these lymph nodes. This one of the highly uh, characteristic features of the tuberculous lymph node. The last one we can also have <coughs> some soft tissue edema adjacent to the tuberculous lymph node. Regarding the color doubler and spectral doubler, the vascular distribution in tuberculous lymph node, it is not specific for tuberculous lymph nodes because this is, can be, give us the criteria of benign and can give us also the criteria of malignant behavior. So ignore now the color doubler and spectral doubler uh, features of tuberculous lymph node until uh, discussing the malignant lymph node. Malignant lymph node is one of two things, either uh, if it is metastatic lymph node or infantous lymph node. Starting with metastatic lymph nodes, what are the ultrasound features of metastatic lymph nodes? A grayscale ultrasound, it is hypochrome. It is rounded, so the first features, loss of its normal oval appearance. So, rounded as you see here, and here, and here, without echogenic hyla, as you see here, so loss of normal echogenic hyla. This is the second feature of metastatic lymph node. The third one, which is plus or minus some additional, additional features. What are these additional features? Number one, we can we can have some what's known as uh, coagulation necrosis, which are some hyperechoic areas inside the node itself. This is what is known as coagulation uh, necrosis, as you see here. This is one of the features of malignant lymph node or metastatic lymph node species. The second feature which is very important, what is known as eccentric cortical hypertrophy. This is eccentric cortical hypertrophy encroaching upon the internal part of the lymph node. Also like this one, this is another example for eccentric cortical hypertrophy. This is one of the features of metastatic lymph node in that. The third feature, which is known as intranodal cystic necrosis, this one similar to what we mentioned already in the tuberculous lymph nodes, multiple uh, low attenuated areas scattered throughout the lymph node itself. The feature after that is ill-defined burden of the lymph node. This is due to extra capsular spread. You cannot define the capsule of the node itself. You cannot see the outline of the node, but it is infiltrating to the adjacent structure. This is one of the features of metastatic lymph node or malignant lymph node. In some cases of metastasis, especially in cases of thyroid carcinoma, we can have some pancreatic calcification inside the metastatic lymph node, giving it a little bit hyper echocardial in comparison to the other structures. So this is one also of the additional features of metastatic lymph nodes. This is one of features of metastatic lymph nodes. Here we have internal cystic necrosis in the lymph node, as you see here. Coming to the lymphomatous lymph node, in grayscale, rounded, like metastatic lymph nodes, hypoechoic, like metastatic lymph nodes. 
without echogenic hilum, also like metastatic lymph node. But one of the features of lymphoma as lymph node, it has internal reticulation. As you see here, some internal reticulation. This one is one of the features of lymphoma or lymphomatous lymph node. This is example for malignant lymph node, hypochoic, rounded, loss of its normal hilum. This is very important feature of malignant lymph node, either metastatic lymph node or lymphomatous lymph node by color Doppler study. What do we have? We mentioned that in the normal lymph node or in the reactive lymph node, we have vascularity along with the hilum volume. But if we have vascularity along with the periphery or mixed vascularity, this is one of the features of malignant lymph node, either metastatic or lymphomatous. So this is very important. If you have peripheral or mixed vascularity of the lymph node, this is one of the characteristic features of malignant lymph node. Another example, very clear here we have peripheral vascularity by color Doppler study. So this is malignant lymph node. Another example, we have peripheral vascularity along with the rounded lymph node here. So this is features of malignant lymph node. Another example, we have mixed and peripheral vascularity of the lymph node. So all of these are different types of malignant lymph node, either lymphoma or <coughs> metastasis. This is example for metastatic lymph node from thyroid papillary carcinoma. As you see, mixed vascularity in the center and in the periphery itself. And the node, as you see, as you see, it is rounded. And also, we have multiple internal cystic necrosis. All of the features of uh, <coughs> malignant lymph node we can see it here. Another example, we have peripheral vascularity and the mixed vascularity also inside the lymph node. This is what we have here flow in the high lung, but we have also peripheral vascularity. And also the lymph node more or less become, uh, become rounded in shape. <coughs> so uh, this is also features of malignant lymph node. Example again for malignant lymph node. What do we have here? We have three pictures. We have rounded nodule lymph node. We have peripheral and we have internal cystic necrosis. So all of these are features of malignant lymph node. The spectral Doppler study for the malignant lymph node is very important. We have increased resistive index. What is the meaning of increased resistive index? Meaning increase of index. Of resistance, increase of resistance inside the lymph node. What is the cause of increased resistance inside the lymph node, the malignant lymph node, either, either metastatic or lymphoma? Because the tumor cells, either lymphoma or the metastasis, replacing the normal cell of the lymph node. So the tumor cells is rigid cells, compressing the intranodal blood vessels. That's why it's causing increased resistance in the uh, in the lymph node, this is against or contrary to the reactive lymph node, which we have hyperemia, and the hyperemia causing the vasodilatation, and vasodilatation causing decreased resistance in the lymph node. That's why we have increased resistance in cases of malignant lymph node, and we have decreased resistance in any case of inflammatory lymph node due to internal hyperemia. That's why we say tuberculous lymph node it can give features of malignancy in cases of increased resistance and also tuberculous lymph node there is inflammation and inflammation can cause vasodilatation and the vasodilatation can cause also increased resistance. The conclusion from this simple talk regarding normal lymph node, hypochoic over with preserved hilum can be avascular or there is flow inside the hilum. Reactive lymph node the same like uh, like normal lymph node, but the only difference is that it is larger than the normal lymph node, 9 mm, more than 9 mm short X. The tuberculous lymph node, the most important features are made together, as you see, and the malignant lymph node, we mentioned the most important is the spec spectral fluidopla regarding the increased assistant index and the uh, color doppler regarding the detection of peripherally uh, vascularity of the node or mixed vascularity and don't forget additional features uh, for metastatic lymph nodes like coagulation necrosis, like eccentric cortical hypertrophy, like intracystic uh, necrosis, like uh, a definition of the outline and like also some 
the cuisine uh, lentenu in case of public drinkers. No? So thank you very much. For No, no, just cortical thickening. The normal is uh, still normal shape, but cortical start to have slight thickening. No, I don't have either. But only the features of malignancy is eccentric hypertension. But regarding the thickness of the cortex, shall we consider also the upper and the lower part or the both side of the uh, lymph node as uh, eccentric thickening? No, because no. usually the lymph node it has more uh, no. cortex in the pore. Yes, 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 yeah. but I mean eccentric hypertrophy encroaching upon the center of the lymph node itself. It's not a matter of just a thickening. It's normal, there is thickening of the upper and lower. Mm -hmm. But encroaching on the substantial center is considered eccentric. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So uh, we can uh, take just a very short break. Uh,